Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel's Making with Marilyn. Now I do all things crafty, but on tonight's video I want to talk about using glitter cardstock as a rhinestone template. Now I have some videos where I've used this and I had a few people ask me what settings I use. So that's all this video is really going to be about tonight. I'm going to talk about it and then I'm going to show you how it works for me. So if you're making rhinestone templates, this pink flock is really the gold standard. It works beautifully, your stones brush into it beautifully, and because the back is sticky, you can attach it to something like this chopping mat that I got from the Dollar Tree. So if you really want to do it the way it's meant to be done, you're going to buy this. Now this is pretty pricey. So what I like to do, especially when I'm trying out a design, just to make sure it looks good, or I'm doing a design that I'm only going to use once or twice, I like to use glitter cardstock. So I've attached these down to this chopping mat as well. It's not sticky on the back, so it's a little bit more tricky. So you can either use a glue stick. You don't want to get in the holes because that'll hold your rhinestones in. You can't get them out. But you can use a glue stick or sometimes I'll use double-sided tape. On this one up here, I just taped it from the top because it's small. Now one time I tried to spray the adhesive spray on the back and that was a big old mistake because it settled up against the sides of the letters or up against the sides of the holes and I could not lift my rhinestones out. So I would not recommend spraying it with adhesive spray. So here's the two card socks that I've had a lot of success with. They're very similar. They're both a black glitter card stock. Now this one, it has kind of a cardstock back, kind of a papery back. It has more of a cardstock or paper texture. And then this one, I wanted to get this really close to the camera. I don't know that you'll be able to tell or not, but it's almost like it has a plasticky coating on the back. It's a very different texture, very smooth, very plasticky. Both of these have worked well for me. The one with the plasticky back is quite a bit more expensive than the one with the paperback, but they've both worked well. I did a reality check tonight and I cut a really small template out of both of these. They both work fine. Now to me, the one with the slightly plasticky back maybe got slightly more of a smooth cut, but the one with the paper backing or the cardstock backing it's a really nice cut as well. And again, it is quite a bit less expensive than the other one. So I think I'll go ahead and show you on the paper one just how I do it. Now this is just a standard grip mat. So I want to place this down on the mat. And then one of the tricks is making sure it is adhered down really well. So you do want to use a decent mat for this. If your cutting mat's all worn out, I don't think this is going to work. Now just for a little bit of added security, I'm going to put the tape right up here. And then I'll cut my design right here. So the first thing I want to do is jump onto the computer and show you the exact settings that I use. All right, so here's my design. It's just a small little heart, and I have it kind of blown up so you can really see it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on make it. And then because I put tape on that, I'm moving it down just a little bit. And then also I have my one heart already cut out. So I need to move it over here. That looks about good. So I'm going to say continue. And then I'm going to go right here to browse all materials. And then I'm just going to type in glitter. From that, I select this glitter cardstock, and that's all I do. So I say done, and I'm ready to cut. It's a fine point blade, and I use default pressure. Now, all machines are different. Your blade might be newer or older than mine. So if you're having issues, try to do some test cuts. Again, machines are different, blades are different. So what works for me may not work for you but hopefully you can find some settings that do work. Now my Cricut light's flashing, so let me go ahead and record this cutting.
Okay, so the first thing I want to do is just go ahead and remove this tape. Then very carefully, let's go ahead and remove this cardstock. Now I'm hoping, oh, <laughs> okay, I was hoping some of the holes would stay inside, but most of them came off because I want to show you what I do when that happens. All right, so that was a really good cut. Sometimes you have more holes left inside than that. And when you do, there's an easy fix. I have this little lint roller. You just roll over it and it picks them up. I think that got all of them. Yeah, they all came up. This black in the middle, that's just part of the design. Now you want to make sure that this isn't on anything sticky when you use your lint roller. Otherwise, they're going to want to stay stuck to what's sticky. So put it on a non-stick surface, use your lint roller, and you should be able to get those out. All right, so I'm going to leave this on the white background so you can see just how easy it is to brush the stones in. Now the baby's booty is where I get my rhinestones, and she is getting ready to start her next buy-in. These are Hyacinth AB, and they are one of my absolute favorites. So I'm pretty sure I ordered a big container of these in the last buy-in. But let's go ahead and brush those on. Just going to do circular motions. I'm just letting the weight of the brush do the work. So then just brush the excess ones off. Now it looks like I have one excess rhinestone right there, so I'll try to just shove it over into the empty hole. All right, so I'll go ahead and get the excess ones off. Now this is just a little paint trim brush. When you use these with the SS10s, which is the size I'm using, there's no problem. When you use these with the little bitty SS6s, sometimes, well most of the time, you'll have some stuck in the bottom. And I can tell I have one little SS6 right here that probably was stuck in the bottom of that either now or the last time I used it with these and it got put in the container. So if you use this with an SS6, just turn it over and look at the bottom and get the excess ones out. All right, so I have one extra stone right here. I'll move it down into place. And really, it was just that easy. So just to recap, this is the gold standard of making rhinestone templates. But when I'm trying to design for the first time, or maybe I'm just going to use it a time or two, I like to use the cardstock. Now, will this work for you? I don't know. Again, machines are different, blades are different, but if you're interested in trying it out, maybe run to Michael's, grab one piece of glitter cardstock, and see if it works for you. Now, the glitter cardstock that I'm using, I will link to it in the video description. One thing about this glitter cardstock is the glitter is kind of encapsulated. So even though I feel texture, this glitter cannot rub off of here. It's not that type of glitter cardstock. Now I mentioned the baby's booty. I'm gonna put a link to her YouTube channel and her store in the video description. She's getting ready to have a buy-in. It's starting in just a couple of days. Check that out if you're interested. Now, if you see this after the buy-in ends, don't fret. She has one almost every month. So thanks so much for joining me and until my next video, bye-bye.